when I was about 17 years old, or 16 years old, in fact, I found this photo in an editorial um, uh, thing that in a magazine of black and whites of drag queens in New York City. And there was one entire page portrait of this queen just flaking her eyebrow with a skinny fucking arm, a waist about 12 inches, and I tore the picture out of the magazine and kept it in my folder with my homework for my entire senior year, and it was a photo of Matthew Anderson. My first experience with Matthew is knowing her as a, are you sign languaging or is she, oh where'd she go? <laughs> Green heels on fleek left, okay. But uh, you know, I knew, uh, this is pre-internet, you know, and I knew of Matthew through just the club world and what we had to do at that time was kind of find our own research and meet people and find the flyers in New York City. And I was this, you know, up and coming small club kid and Matthew was a beacon for me at that time as a club kid as part of a duo called Matthew and Zaldi, and it was him and his boyfriend Zaldi at the time, but legendary. And then I saw Matthew again on House of Style, hosted by Cindy Crawford, and they did a special little you know thing on House of Style on MTV on a makeup artist called Matthew Anderson. So Matthew's always been a big part of my life. I've seen him visually. He's been a big part of my life, and now I'm very proud to call this guy my mentor, my friend. Um, my good uh, white wine, Judy Drinking bitch, Pina uh, Grigio, and the males. But Matthew's been a big, uh, uh, he's helped me out. We've we helped each other a lot in a lot of things in our lives. I gave her my job. She really did. We can talk about this. And and the only reason I would have ever been on America's Next Top Model is because of Matthew. We can talk about this. It's. I always think he was Eve Harrington. I am Matthew Anderson. Okay, no one knows all about <laughs> but, for that yes, but can we all collectively together just give a huge round of applause to uh, We're all here. I'm going to keep this microphone open. This is a, a question and answer time. And I'm just going to give Matthew his time and just have your time on the microphone. And I'm going to drink this. Oh, this bitch. It's vodka and soda. <laughs> See, they don't... Oh, hey, it's a spot. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Matthew, it's all yours. Give it up, Matthew. Hey. Uh, they asked me to do a talk, and I said, sure. I said, what do you want to talk about? I said, I don't know. Um, because the way that people approach me, I, mean, I don't know, you're all drag race fans, obviously. Right? Yeah. 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 So a lot of you know me through the drag wrestling, and I, of course, do RuPaul, and have done Ru for a very long time now, right from the beginning, and, and that's been an amazing thing, so I've evolved along with that. Um, and other people know me through my Instagram thing, which is my own personal self-portraiture, which is a whole other kettle of fish. It's not like drag race, it's like something else, some kind of strange thing. And then, it's like, I'm a photographer, celebrities, and it's like, I have a very long, it's not checkered, it's, um, it's sort of a nice wavy stripe. <laughs> um, so I've been involved with makeup since I was uh, basically uh, like 19, and I was, I was in college, and I was studying fashion and textile, because at that time I was like, I'm going to be a uh, Disney animator. No, I'm going to be an illustrator. No, I'm going to be a model. No, I never thought that. Um, but I kept spinning the wheel of fortune. And the time came to do something with my life. Because I, I didn't graduate high school. It's not that I'm not smart enough to. I was an exchange student and I was already... They kept me back in the second grade because they thought I was emotionally retarded. Oh. They were right. I, I didn't speak until, I would not speak in public until I was um, seven or eight. Like, I wouldn't speak, I just sat there just like, like a <laughs> So they thought that I had problems. So I was older, so I, I was an exchange student, which was the best thing that ever happened, beautiful youth, but understanding. And now I understand, oh, you're 
you're a YFU girl? Oh, okay. I said I wanted Paris. They sent me to Chico, California. <laughs> 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 you yeah. I think it was Playboy. 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 So unseemly. <laughs> <laughs> So that was amazing, and that was a big thing for me because um, Australians are, they're lovely people. Um, they're not always the most supportive. So coming to America was just sort of like, it's like a yes you can thing. It's like, <gasps> like school, I went to an all boys school, I had to wear a school uniform, so coming to America was just like, I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I came back, um, they said, well, if you want to go on to your senior year, you're going to have to repeat it. It's like, I'll, I'll be 20. So I decided on fashion textile because they let me do hard economics in America. My mother wouldn't let me use a sewing machine. So it's like, I'm going to do fashion. I made prom gowns. <laughs> Just, it's like, it's like, I was so into it. So I got into, into college doing fashion textile and I was like, I don't really like fashion that much. And I am the ultimate fashion geek. Matthew, what does that mean? What does fashion textile mean? Design. Textiles is... Um, like designing the actual designing patterns and knits and things like that. So I was fashion and textile. I was doing a bachelor of arts degree. It's not me. And they were trying to design us. They're trying to get us to be um, very nice designers of things in beige, um, in like beige linen and, and, and lovely things for nice people. So it was it was a rather stultifying experience. But I was allowed to do photography, and I should have been a graphics designer. That's really but well, to this day, it's like, I hope you enjoy some of the lovely things I've made for people out there. Do the pickups and the t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I was doing photography, and I, I would photograph my portal sisters, and I got makeup from the doll store, I make them up, and that's where it started. People like saying, oh, I love what you're doing, would you do it for my fourth year project? And after a year, I was like, I don't want to be a fashion designer. And my friend said, um, let me hook you up with an agency, and here we go. And I went in with this hilarious um, portfolio. But it was interesting. It wasn't. It was. It was unapologetically. This is what I do, whatever that is. And I said, we don't know what it is you've got. But you've got something. And off we went from there. And my only desire in life was to get the Holy Grail of tears, which was a Vogue tear and a Harper's Bazaar tear. Hold, and, hold on, Matthew. Um, does anyone know what a tear is? Oh. How many people don't know what a tear is? How many people are makeup artists in the audience? How many people are makeup artists and don't know what a tear is? Back in the days of the magazines, before interweb, um, you get your picture published and you open it and you go, there's my picture. <laughs> and that's your tear. And then you put that in your portfolio and go on from there. So that's, that was your tear. So. That's where I started. But the Holy Grail was was Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, and then every good Australian makeup artist um, made the the, the Mecca journey to uh, London to start. And of course, this was the this was the eighties. Can you imagine That's how old I am now? Um, it was the eighties, and it was and it was amazing. The most incredible things. It was ID magazine, the face, um, all of this great, incredible fashion. Is like. Um, Vivian Westwood, Malcolm McLaren, um, body map, just the most phenomenal stuff that's going on. So that was where you wanted to go, because the makeup was just, everything was so full on. Um, so I got my tears, finally, it's, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, and um, weird side part, we could talk about it later, or not, I was married at the time, and she'd moved to New York, so I said, well, I'll go buy you New York, and then pop over to Europe, ran out of money in New York, and they said, well, I guess we're going to have to start here. <laughs> because New York was sort of like, oh, you've got to make it everywhere else before you make it in New York. So I started from there. And uh, I always tell people that the ship I came in on was drag. Drag was a thing that, like, I was doing all right in New York, and I was, you know, I was doing German catalog and just really dull stuff. But it was, you know, I was making money, it was cute. Um, but the Holy Grail, um, you know, the, sorry, the, the, the whole thing was um, breaking the code, and drag did that for me. And my, I was doing well, but my big start came, I, um, I used to work with, I used to do stuff with Suzanne Marsh, with my, um, with my partner at the time, Zoldi, 
and she had to start, um, she said, oh, wouldn't it be a good idea if we were to do the makeup for the Halloween, the, the, the law being to believe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so it's just like a bunch of queens, velvet rope, punches going by, we're all getting face on. That year I was a pink poodle with, with jewel nipples. <laughs> <laughs> and Zoldi was an ostrich. I was jealous because he had the whole showgirl tail thing. I had a, an afro with puffy ears and tiny, tiny pink. I guess I was a bikini. I was gorgeous there. <laughs> yeah. I really was. Um, but Stephen Klein, the photographer, was doing a shoot for Italian Vogue. Um, it was one of my favorite models at the time. Do you remember um, uh, Gourmet? And he um, said, I love what you're doing. Could you finish off this job? And I was like, oh, no, no. <laughs> 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 Yes, I would love to. <laughs> um, and that's it. And this is the great thing. It's like when you get tapped on the shoulder by the big boys, when, the, when one of the big boys goes, it's like, you, come over here. It's like, it's like top the ride. Push forward, it's going to be downhill and very fast from here. So that was amazing. And that's where the, the drag was the thing that, that what I was doing on myself, people were like, that thing you're doing, I want that. Which is interesting at this point with all the Instagram self portrait stuff. It's that full circle because, and this is, I, without, I don't want this to sound arrogant, I've always been my best source of inspiration. I understand. People. And I, I, will, I don't mind what I'm going to do to myself. I'm not going to go, are you sure? So I say, I'll say, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that was the whole thing. And, um, and because of drag and with RuPaul, we were, um, I met Ru early on in the clubs and she was, um, she was star booty and she was all, you know, 100 sets of teeth, tiny mini skirt and a, a peasant top gorgeous and hilarious, but um, we really bonded on a trip to Japan with Suzanne Bach <coughs> doing um, drag club gigs all over Japan. And he was actually trying out Supermodel of the World. It was the first time they'd just written it, and he was just trying it out in different places. It was there in the clubs, but she was, and I, I always say, it's like, it's like, why aren't you all gagging? It's like, she's been doing it for longer than anyone. and. No one can touch her at this point. Well, Raj. No, 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 no. No, you know, no, but no one. I, it's like, I still can't see anyone that really can come for that. It's really quite brilliant what she does. And then when we started, it's like, my whole thing at times is like, drag me through a lot of makeup. So we did Supermodel of the World. It's like, it's all about lashes and a beige feel. <laughs> that's it. And that's what it was. Because the, the less makeup she wore, the more like a woman she was. And that was really interesting because for America, this wasn't a jokey clown. This was this glamorous, beautiful, leggy creature. Woman. She was kind of woman. She was woman. People did not know. Because yeah. there was no markers to go. So it's like, oh, the funny clown makeup means it's a man. It was a beautiful woman. And she was she was warm and kind and funny and had a huge smile. It's like, it's like, what a great wagon to hitch my star to. Kind of Disney. Disney drag, what are you saying? It's so or it's got a, like a Disney quality to It's, it. it's, it's a like very that. wholesome. <laughs> it yeah. is strangely wholesome. And she's got a bit, she's got a bit blue in her all day. I'm not talking about stupid cheese. Um, <laughs> but it's like uncomfortable when you watch Ruin Star Booty and she's like being slutty. She and was like, all horrible. Yeah, yeah, I'm nice like, what? Nice. Mom, don't. <laughs> 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 there, was, um, there, was the, there was the the comedy yeah. alien thing for a couple of years where it's like, like, are those toilet paper rolls on your head? She'd cover it in a bit of fabric. But she'd be like in a, in a cat suit with a hood with toilet paper rolls on her head. be like, okay, I'll have at it. It was like, so I remember the love ball, which was a huge thing way back in the 90s. Um, one of the first big AIDS fundraisers. And Madonna was there. And I was crazy. Yeah, 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 God. <laughs> <laughs> that was gone. Well, that was the first love ball, which was, when voguing happened, and that's kind of where um, Madonna went doink and grabbed the voguing thing because um, the balls, Paris is voguing, and that was all coming along. And the second love ball was a huge thing because they had houses, but it was like the house of Amani, the house of Donna Carrington, yeah. and then the houses. And um, 
at the time, um, Susan said, oh, you should do something with the dawn, okay? <laughs> and she did something with her, um, Robbie and I were House of John and Karen. And we were up against there de La Chapelle, the House of Armani. Wow. Um, <laughs> and then this amazing thing that Crystal Ward is doing, she is homeless. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. And they had dancers like huge lips and huge eyes, you know, you know and this whole thing, Crystal Ward is doing it. And the House of Donna Karen, we were, um, we were cross species, cross dressing aliens. We all came out um, in Donna Karen attire. Faces, glasses, bullets, like scarves and things. And we basically stripped on the runway until um, we were wearing um, like alien mirror body suits underneath. And we just, like, used to do these ridiculous things where we'd be wearing like four or five cat suits. You just keep going. <laughs> 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 Absolute fucking misery. And uh, towards the end of the club, there was a bit like going out with bags on our heads with a, a straw hole so that you could stick a straw in it. It's like a kind of weird fly. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> um, we got more into, and we were never particularly um, fair. And my and Zoli and Zoli does all of um, Rue's gowns, and, and Zoli is one of the most phenomenal talents I've ever really met. He's done the most beautiful work in London, um, and he does incredible people like Gaga and Michael Jackson. This is it. Um, they do the most beautiful things, the most incredible things. The man is. But there we were back in the, in the, in the early days, at the Chelsea Hotel, um, just in a flea infested carpet and just with all these pins in the floor, you always had a pin in your foot. <laughs> Nothing's changed. No, no. <laughs> now you're just in Silver Lake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, please. And, uh, and the unfortunate um, advent of cat well, Matthew, can I ask you a question? I wish you would. Know, we, yeah, I know. I'm not simply officiating, but I'm really like really fascinated by listening to you talk a little bit. You know, I've been I've been a makeup artist for a while now, and um, I've you know idolized you and so on. But you've seen the transition, what's happening in drag, and how everyone is so on fleek. Everyone is a version of Raven or Roxy Andrews for me in my eyes. Did I just say it out loud? <laughs> but you, you know, there's, there's a template that everyone is supposed yeah. to follow, and the drag that I started to learn was yours, and really? those were up until, you know, like Joey Arias, and Lady Bunny, and everyone had their own personal character and style, and now I just find that everyone start, starts to look like well, each other. How do you feel about that? Um, it's interesting, because it's like, there's so many drag babies now. Yeah. RuPaul's Drag Race has, has you know, Filled the, the pond with frog spawn from which <laughs> small drag frogs. <laughs> and I, I, we did notice that it's like this. For me, Raven is sort of the ultimate. She's the gold standard. Yes, God. <laughs> the gold standard for face, and yeah. you can get right up on that stuff, and it's like, oh, that is lovely. Yeah. It's just when you're up on it, it's like. The precision, and and David's a lovely looking man, yeah. but what she does to that that nose, that nose that from the front is non-existent as she turns sideways. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh God, watch out, Titanic, it's an iceberg. <laughs> but it makes so much sense. It's changed everyone's lives. But it did change my life. Everyone can put yes. You can put an exclamation point and you're done. You don't yeah. have to do anything else. Right. Just if you make your nose look a dick. <laughs> that full head, full helmet head, beautiful. Um, but I'm watching, it's like, I've just noticed in the past year or so, um, girls are starting to get prettier. Like, this um, hilarious striped face has started to soften out and become more gentle. I myself, no, no one's allowed to stone me, honey. <laughs> um, I don't particularly like an overdose. But it's, it's not like, like, oh my god, it's hideous. It's, it's, it's like, I don't warm to it. It's like, um, I enjoy the artistry of it. But, but for me, my whole career has been to make, with Rue, has been to make her warm and believable. No matter how ridiculous it gets, there has to be a warmth and believability. And I'm so fascinated with that. It's like... Uh...